Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Stories of Horror. I'm your host, the Arsenal Whalen Butler, co-creator of New Genesis, and today is a special episode of Stories of Horror. Um, my grandmother and my mother will be telling stories about some paranormal encounters that they've had in Mississippi and some in Texas. So this would be a very good episode of us stepping back into the unknown and to the mystery around the world. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Without further ado, hit the intro. <laughs> Okay, the first ghost story I can remember when I was at home. Um, my mom's house, we used to have stuff creaking through the house. You would hear people walking on the floor heater and it wouldn't be nobody there. I remember one time when I had my first daughter, I was over my mom's house. I was helping her clean up and her record player came on. I mean, the arm lifted up and the record started playing. In the door slam where my daughter was in the bedroom, I could not get that door open, and she was in there playing with somebody. She was looking up in the air. So I ran outside to get my mom, and I said, Mom, the record player came on, and I can't get in the room with Michelle that somebody's in there with her because she's laughing and playing. So my mom was like, don't worry about it. It's just one of the people that come by to visit me every now and then. So we went outside, went and looked in the window, and I could see my daughter playing on the bed with her hands up talking to somebody. And I was like, okay, I need to get in there to get her out of my mom's <laughs> And no one's there, right? It's okay. It's okay. They always come by to visit me. So she went back in the house and she said, okay, y'all, stop playing. Let her get her daughter. Open the door right now. And when she said that, the record player stopped and the door swung open. And I ran in there and got my daughter. And she was, she was just looking around. She was smiling. And my mom was like, y'all need to cut this shenanigans out and quit doing that and leave her alone. And it just everything just stopped. And it's two places in Mississippi, right? In Mississippi, yeah. Mississippi, 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 known for a lot of like that certain room that we that, go in. It yeah. always be dark and like I don't know that room like y'all had us playing in or whatever like that. Like nobody hardly go in or something. The back be closed in it. Yeah, yeah, that was mom. It was like she say she always people always came by to visit her. Like Mississippi, Louisiana, you know they have like the things that people yeah. doing yeah. like yeah. testing with the other side and. Supernatural made voodoo here and like there. Like my mom, like that. she say she would be sitting in the house and uh, the door would open. Nobody is, and she would tell them close the door, and the door would close back. Uh, my oldest daughter Michelle, she's she's been over her house one time. She say she cleaned up and something came through there, just knocked all the stuff back, and she's like, I ain't got time to play with y'all today. Y'all need to stop. And they would just stuff would pick up, and they just it would go away. My mom's house was it was always somebody in there. You could be sitting in the house and you feel somebody hit your ear or you'll feel cold air and you'll look around and there's nobody there, but you'll see something going through the house, like stuff be moving, going through the yeah, house. Yeah, that would be a sense. Like, like you feel like, yeah. like extremely cold. Like, why is it so cold? My heater, yeah. heater is blasting and everything. Like, yeah. the ice cold and yeah. stuff. That always be like a sense of yeah. something. So she, my mom always said, she always said, it was always somebody come by to visit her. So it was either people she'd be talking to. Because her record player would come on. Like it was certain, it was weird because it was certain records that they would play. Like she, she, it was certain record that they would put on every time you came on. And she was like, I don't want to hear that music today. And the record, and I'm telling you what I saw, the record would flip off and the record player would cut out. And it get quiet. And the second ghost story was when we lived on Southport. Oh, you didn't tell about the other one when we used to stay next door to the neighbors in Mississippi. Where she had the one bedroom that was always nice. Oh, my neighbor. When I lived in Miss in, in, in Leland, Elizabeth, Mississippi. My neighbor, Miss Mary. Oh, yeah, one thing. It's only two streets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what happened was, yeah. uh, <laughs> Miss Mary, I was over Miss Mary's house, and she had this one room. Her whole house was a mess. But this one room like a was house. beautiful. Everything in there was white. And there was this shift row that was, it was oak. And inside of it was like sterling silver hair stuff. And it had fold up napkins and clothes and stuff. And I was like, Mary, why is this room so clean? Oh, this mom room. She was like, this mom room. She come by to visit me every now and then. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe her mama. Come. Now, I'm not thinking Miss Mary is 80-something years old. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, maybe her mom come back. I'm like, I can't say she didn't. So one day we was outside. 
And uh, Miss Mary, I said, Miss Mary, I say, uh, where's Mr. John? That's her husband. She said, oh, he's going to the store for us. So we sitting on the porch. All of a sudden, the door started opening. I looked through the house, the door in the kitchen opened. I said, Miss Mary, I said, is somebody in your house? She's like, no, nah, ain't nobody here but me. And the other door opened. I ain't, still ain't seen nobody. I said, Miss Mary, your door's are open. She said, oh, that's just mama. She coming home. She, she just going in that room, in that back room. Don't worry about it. She ain't going to come no further than right there. The last door opened, then the door to the room opened and closed. I said, okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> so I left, but she said, oh, that's just mama. She ain't going to bother you. She always come back. That kind of reminds me of um the movie that you don't like, The Exorcist. Oh, my God. It said on set, sometimes the set used to have stuff like, yeah, well, like the set caught on fire. Yes. And the yes. one room that didn't get touched was the room that they did. They formed a scene where she had the exorcism. Yes. It, was like the per yeah. it was still perfect. That well, they that's had to what it. this was. That's how it was. Yeah. That room, if you nothing saw out of place. One, nothing, the, house, the room never had dust in it. It never got dirty. That's crazy. And it was weird, though, but she said nobody went in that room. That was her mom's room. Nobody we went still in. said we be seeing stuff like at nighttime <laughs> when we used to play. We used to just see somebody. Mom said it was Miss Mary, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we used to see somebody with a white gown just move like they be watching us through the fence, then they just move off. Yeah, but they go in I the swear house. she be in the house, so I don't think there was. I, well, I don't know. she said her mom was round there. That's what she so told me. We just see somebody, and they always have a white gown, and they just move. Third story was the one we lived on Southport, 515 Southport. Now, that story, Shauna can vouch for that. Uh, she used to tell me all the time somebody would come in there and put the cover on her. And I'm like, Shauna, I'm not getting up at night. You know, unless I had to go to the bathroom. She's like, Mom, you just came in the room and put the cover on me. I was like, no, nah, that wasn't me. Like, for sure. <laughs> like, she swore it was me. She said she saw me. I, the thing was, I never, like, really, you know how, like, you see somebody just close the door. You just see. Yeah, can you wake up sometimes, like, in your sleep, you're like, yeah, oh, you, you gotta wake take the up, bed. You might and see then you just see the door closed or whatever. So I just assumed it was her putting the cover on me. Because I feel them put the cover on me. Then when I finally wake up. It just like the door closed. You went to sleep and you yeah, like kind of. Okay, sleep so like. when yeah. she told me this one night, I said, "You know what? I'm gonna sit up and see what's going on because that's not me going in that room." So I told him, "I said, this is what I need y'all to do in each one of the rooms: get a Bible, open it up to the middle of the Bible, and put it at the door." And so they and did. I used that. to read my Bible every night. Yeah. Anyway, so, so that she, they did that. So I'm laying up there. I'm not asleep. All of a sudden, I see a light coming through the house. So I'm like, who is this walking through the house with a light? Got me having a flashlight. And so I'm sitting there, and this lady appeared out of nowhere. She had on this pretty dress, and she was standing there. And I was like, what you want? And she looked at, she looked in there, as, and Shana and Ron say, you're not getting my kids. You might as well go back where you came from. Going back where you came from, you're not getting my kids. And she just stood there and looked at me, and she turned her head like this. And so I got my Bible, and I picked up the Bible, and I started reading the Lord's Prayer. I said, the Lord is my shepherd. I said, you know, I started reading that. She started bagging up. I said, you might as well go back where you came from because you're not getting my kids. And then she started crying. She just tears rolling. And she, she was bagging up. And the whole time I'm reading, she bagged, she bagged all the way back till she got to the garage door. And she went through the door and disappeared. When I talked the door, when I tell you it was colder than a deep freezer, ice was on the door. And the next morning, I told Shana, I was like, she's like, Mom, you came in my room. I said, no, I didn't. That wasn't me. And I told her what I saw. And then the next night, that's when we heard the basketball, right? I mean, I used to, we used to hear the basketball. Yeah, she's like, Mom, she came right. in and woke me up. She said, Mom, somebody out there messing with our basketball. I had to play basketball. So, the neighbors, so. so I got up, me and Shonda got up and went out there with a the flashlight. I said, I'm going to tell these kids they need to go home. It's too late to be out there playing ball. See, the thing was, our window was right there so we could look. And see the court right there. So if you bouncing the ball, we peep out there. You won't have time to run because our window. Oh, yeah, you'll see right there. Like, I yeah, see across right my there. patio. Yeah. So patio when, like right there by the window. So when I came, we came out. I said, "Ain't nobody out here." I said, "Well, maybe they ran off." Shows it went away. They ran off. My, we would have seen them. Yeah, and you know they had to come all the way. We well, ran the, the house. house to get out of the yard. So I'm like, we would have passed them. Coming in, going in the fence, they would have passed this guy. And our ball was in the house, so. I'm like, okay. And then we were saying, when we was outside, we started hearing voices in the garage. Remember, mm -hmm. we could hear people that talking, just talking, just talking. And uh, the weird thing about that, after all that, we got Rev Morgan. Remember, Rev Morgan came over there. He said, everyone, y'all go in your rooms, get your Bible, put it <clears> in your heart. <throat> he went in the garage. He, Me, him, and Rev Morgan went in the garage. <laughs> I was <laughs> Went in the garage, right? So Rev Morgan started reading his book. He had this little book. He started reading it. 
And all of a sudden, everything started shaking. He said, whatever you do, don't stop praying. Just keep praying. All of a sudden, I don't know what that was. It went straight up through the ceiling. Remember? It was a burnt hole in the top of the ceiling up there. Well, whatever that was, it went out through that ceiling. And when we separated, this is why I know they were, it wasn't gone. I went back to get some stuff. I got out of work. I was working at the time. I stopped by there to pick up some stuff. Remember, I said, mm -hmm. I'm going to stop by and get some stuff. I got the I last other me. stuff. Shana would go. <laughs> I said, Shana, go around. No, I'm not going. <laughs> so I went and got the stuff, and I left, the, and I forgot my broom. I said, well, she'll on her way out till she'll stop by and get the broom. I said, that's the last thing we need. Cheryl stopped by. She called me. She said, Mama, uh, where the broom at? I can't find the broom. I said, baby, it's right there at the door. She said, no, it's not. So I said, well, it was at the door. I left. Maybe the, the men came back over there and moved. She said, it's down there in the hallway by the bedroom door. So I said, well, that's all right. She said, I'll go get it. And she was still on the phone. She said, Mama, the door opened it down there because I had closed all the doors. Mm -hmm. She said, the door. I said, don't go down there. I said, lay the broom. Come out of the house. She said, the doors, all the doors starting to open. I said, get out of the house now. I said, get out of the house now. She said, they coming, something is coming down the hallway. The doors are opening and closing, and it's coming this way. I said, get out of the house now. Don't cut no lights off. Don't do nothing. Just get out of the house. And by the time she got to the front door and came out, she said, the door was slamming closed, and the lights started going out. And when she got out, came out the house, she closed the door. She said, I don't know if I locked it or not. She said, that light went out in the living room. Mm -hmm. And she got in her car and left. I said, don't worry about it. She said, and how I know it's something in that house, the workers came the next week to clean that house. And the man that owned the house said he went to get them lunch, came back, and all those workers were sitting on the side of the road said they wasn't going back in that house. Mm. Oh, and it was a time when everybody got sick except for me. Oh, yeah. We don't know what that was. The, the sickness. Uh, everybody got yeah. sick. It was, for some reason, <laughs> everybody got Every sick. Every night I used to read my Bible now. But everybody got sick for I some reason. I got sick and he, everybody was like, maybe it was the flu or whatever. I did not get sick. Mm -mm. I was like, every day I used to read my Bible and stuff. I don't know if that saved me from getting sick or whatever. Because it might have happened around the time I was reading the Bible or something. But... And I, oh, and one more thing. I remember when we stayed in that house, Shell, Shell woke me up one night and said she had a nightmare. Said so something dark was trying to touch us. She was pregnant with uh, Nini. Oh, okay. Something the pregnant dark. stuff that now. Happened with me. Something was trying to yeah. touch her stomach. Yeah. And uh, I say, whatever you do, whatever it is, don't let it touch you. She, and and uh, that's why I put a Bible at that at that uh, garage door. So whatever was in that garage, it, it was stuck in that garage. Mm -hmm. But she said she had a dream. She don't know if it was a dream or what. But something kept trying to touch her people, stomach. People have a lot of stories like that. They say, like, yeah. they have a sleep paralysis. They did say, like, they yeah, think you woke. And they say they feel like they see something, like, when they're pregnant, yes. when they're pregnant like that, they see something, like, by their, there's a lot of stories. Like, people say they yeah. see something, yeah. like, like right. trying to get them or something. But you can't move. You yeah. don't know if you woke or not. So, like, that's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. I was like, I could not move. <laughs> I remember I was, that. I was, like, trying to call mom. I could not move at all. And I could like see myself like, you know how your eyes moving, yeah. but you couldn't move. And then it was like some, you couldn't see the face or nothing. It just like a little, I think flowy, I got up and came a little flowy there, dark yeah. thing or whatever. And then it like came down like this, like you're trying to touch my stomach. And I was sitting up here like, you know, like saying like, yeah. trying to say no and stuff like that. And I was looking at it and stuff just kept looking at it, looking at it. I ain't turned off and stuff like that. Like I was trying to make it move and stuff, but it like, it did like, did like you say, it couldn't touch me or something. And it just went away. Yeah, people have a lot of stories like yeah, that. They so like, I don't know what it was. So it's like a sleep paralysis state. Or something like this. Yeah. Where was that? That was scary. Like, where was that when we say where? In, I in think life? we were saying, um, it might have been. I think it might have been. No blood. Either blind. there or we were saying, um, not had to be blind. It had to be blind because when I moved No, there, no. It could be blind because I was pregnant with Paris then. It was yeah. when I, it was like, yeah, it was blind. Yeah. Because I was, yeah, with white. So I found out when I moved to Eastfield, I, I prayed all the way through the house while I went through the house. I prayed all the way through the house. Okay, what about the story with, um, <laughs> you said Reverend Morgan with the lady? Oh. Oh, we, oh that was like okay, a horrible thing. Happened, like, it you should was not a, let no uh, child do that. It was a, uh, <laughs> it was a Wednesday night prayer meeting. And the lady name was Sister Finley. Sister Finley came in and she kept she told Reverend Morgan, she said, I need y'all to pray for me. She said, Cause they cause they the, the things are trying to get me and they keep trying to kill me and tell me her. and the devil in my house, and he keep telling me to kill my daughter and all that. So Rev Morgan said, Well, we're gonna pray for you. Which I don't think they should have had us in there so to make it a training. He experience. said, <laughs> he said, Well, everybody stay in here. So Rev Morgan started praying. 
Sister Finley, she looked, he started praying. She stopped and looked at him. All of a sudden, she started in a weird language. Talking to something I never heard before. Then she started running around the church. Running, I mean, and first Holland, she started running like slow. Then all of a sudden, she kept getting faster and faster and faster. So, Seth, that was crackhead. And yeah, worse. And I was like, we were like, <laughs> uh, Reverend Morgan told, her, told Albert and Brother, brother uh, 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 what was it? What's this? Uh, brother Thomas. Brother Thomas. To grab, to grab her. her. Yes. Now, mind you, Albert was 6'3", 217 pounds. Brother Tom was 6-something, and he went over, he was close to three. When I tell you they grabbed, this little woman this one big like as poo. One big as poo. <laughs> they grabbed one head this arm, one head that arm. Reverend Morgan said, hold on to oh, it. Before that, she was throwing up. Yeah, first. she threw up some green stuff before, she, before they grabbed And I was like... And uh, Rev Morgan told us that all the kids, said, everybody put your Bible, get your Bible, put he it on your heart. He like said, this. put the Bible on your heart. And so when they grabbed her, she was still talking in that tongue. I'm standing there watching this woman, this little bitty woman, took both of her arms and bought them together and hit them together and got loose. She like mm -hmm. pushed them. And I was like, oh, now then they telling me, get all the small kids and go to the back. And uh, Sister the Morgan bank. said, no, don't let them go out. So we went out the bank. No, they, they told y'all to stay in there. Because mm -hmm. whatever it was, it was right there. And if y'all had left out, it would have followed y'all. Yeah. So Sister Finn, all of a sudden, when she did that, she dropped on her knees. And she just came back to herself. At well, first, and she her, started cussing out her daughter real yeah, bad. Like, her I mean, daughter, bad, bad. Her daughter told her she going to kill her and stuff. Yeah, her okay. daughter had told them, though, that... It was something wrong with their mom. Yeah. mom. So now Rev Morgan didn't leave it alone. So his sister Finley yeah. left. <laughs> so he told me, we going to go around to her house. <laughs> no, she said, can y'all come, come and in my house? house. That's what and sister Morgan was like, no, nah, Rev, we need to leave that alone. <laughs> she said, Rev Morgan. Uh -huh. So she said, he said, she said, come around my house and pray. So we go around, Rev Morgan, we go around there and pray. So we left Shana and them. Shana stayed in sister, uh... In the, the car. I forgot what her name I forgot her car. She said, watch my uh, kids. I think her first name was Jessica. So she was Jessica, like, yeah, yeah, Jessica. He, she said, watch my kids. If I don't come back. She said, drive off with, with them. Kids. And I'm like, so, in middle school. <laughs> all of a sudden, okay, so we go. It's me, Sister Morgan, Reverend Morgan. No, first we went inside. Remember, I went indoors with y'all. Yeah, and then they pray. told y'all to go out. Yeah, we and prayed. That's when all the doors locked. So no, the, the, after, yeah, he, no, after we got the doors we locked out. Then the kids we go inside. Well, that's when the lady popped up. Wait a minute, I know. We was praying. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck, Chuck and them were school function. function. We were praying. Let me tell you what happened, Wade. We went in the lady house. I ain't never seen them in the locks on one door. And when they want them locked down, we still, when Reverend Morgan started praying, you can hit them lock click and going down. We did not lock the door. We just uh, closed the door. They just came in. So when we got locked on, Reverend Morgan them told them to go out. Well, first, so, before that happened. Oh, yeah. When the, the lady, lady came. Well, let me tell you what happened. Up. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> Reverend Morgan, sister, he was praying, praying for Sister Finley. And then Sister Finley went outside. Reverend Morgan went behind her. Okay, mind you now, it's a courtyard. The only way to get in that courtyard is to come through somebody's apartment. Now it happened when we were all so reading the verse first. Hold on, ain't nobody, <laughs> ain't look, ain't nobody out there. There's nothing out there. You can't get in unless you, you go through get the apartment, apartment to get to, get to the bank right there. So now. Sister Finley's standing out there and Red Morgan telling us to read the Bible, but we reading the Bible. He said, when it comes to you, read, start reading read your it. verse. And I was nervous because I was like, what if I don't know the word? Who my part is? That's right there. Like, so, you know, so we read. See what, you know how you do it. The lady, see what this is what that means. You didn't see this lady. All of a sudden, she stepped out from behind Sister Femme. She came out of nowhere. We out of nowhere. I don't know where she came from. She, I don't know what happened to Reverend Morgan. He stopped. He did not move. He didn't say nothing. He didn't blink. That's when I knew we should have left. And uh, they he left out. He off. went. He went, they, that's when they told the church. You remember your dad told y'all to go out. They, they like, left. Go out the house, go out they left. Said, get in my car. And, and uh, like, so we in the inside, right? The lady come in. She walked up to me. She said, I know you. I said, no, you don't. She said, yes, I do. I almost had you in Mississippi, but you got away from me. She said, but I'm going to get you in Dallas. She went around talking no, to everybody. No, I'm telling you this is what the lady said. So she said, I, she say, I, she can say, I she know. To everybody she said, I know around. you. And she told your dad, she said, I know I know what you are, but don't touch me. Of course she they told know. him, don't of touch me. Of course they know. She, she said, don't touch me. 
Yo, that when your daddy was doing, he was good at church. She said, do she not, said, touch, do not me. touch me. He said, I just want to pray. She said, don't touch me. She said, don't pray. She said, don't touch me. She ran from it. She wouldn't let him put her hands on. That's the thing. That time, she, she would, would, he would She would not let him touch her. And your daddy started praying. She started bagging up. When your daddy started praying, she started bagging up. And I'm like, when she got the Red Morgan, I'm when she got the Red Morgan, she did, she did something like this, and Red Morgan just stopped. He did not she move. She kept trying to get when him. When Sister Morgan got that door open, she said, "Let's go, y'all." She said, "Believe her." Husband. She <laughs> said, "I said, what about Red Morgan?" She said, "Y'all better go get ready." Let's go. She Just said, "Let's go say. get ready." Somebody go get ready. <laughs> Your daddy went out there and got Red Morgan. He talked when he talked Red Morgan. Red Morgan jumped and came to his senses. And he started walking. I don't know what was happening because she was doing oh. something around his face. And I was like, okay. She did. I don't know what she said. Something to him, too. Him, but you remember, what? she was talking to him, too. The whole time she was out there, too, standing in front of him, she was saying something. Don't nobody know what she said. Sound but she was standing in front of him. The lady door when Red Morgan, when Red Morgan oh, came, so the Morgan got in the car and crunked the car. We all got in the car. So the friend came running out the house and somebody had called the police. This woman jumped on top of the police car. And I'm telling you, said, wait no. a minute. The white police officer got out and said, ma'am, you got to get out. The black, she did something. The black and police officer said, off, no. He said, oh, no, hell no. And he said, backed no. up. And the other police was, took out running trying to catch the car. Because the black one ran, drove the out there. He said, no. He said, no, he wasn't going to deal with that. He's always, they always call the cops the next for the, day, um, yeah. for like the, the paranormal day, stuff. The next oh, he told us to go around there. Told him to go around there. I'm not getting there. I'm going to get out of here. She had salt this high. She had her down. I called Red Morgan's pastor. Mm -hmm. Come on, said, I'm going to just check on. I said, I hope you ain't going in. I said, I ain't going in. I said, don't go in because I don't know what this is. We went around there and she had salt in her door. I don't know what Little, what's the name? The, um. The Ironfield Poultry Guys, mm -hmm. the, the one that happened in Europe, UK, yeah, yeah. they called the police and they said, this is not a matter for yeah. <laughs> the well, officer. Yeah, so, this is a matter for Yeah, because they said they seen some stuff, but they went to the house. But we found out later on that the church she came from, she did the same thing. They put her out of that oh, church. Yeah, when he called the other church. He called her, Red Morgan finally called the other church and they told her they put her out. When she did that in their church, they told her she had to go. They didn't know what they were dealing with. They didn't with. know they what they were dealing with. Problem. They didn't want to deal with it. They put her out the church. That's more of like yeah. priest, priest like. Yeah. If you do, don't bring the hip over here. Y'all about to say, don't bring it over here. <laughs> I swear on her last night family, but her face. It just been so long. Like, look, don't break. Well, and she starts saying she knows. That you. concludes <laughs> the the storytelling. You guys got any um social medias? Yeah. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Miss Classy, and also on Instagram and Facebook. No, I'm not on none of them. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, guys, y'all think that uh, ghosts are not real? They are real. And there are some things that we can't explain. Yeah. There are some things that happen that nobody can explain. And you're intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> now, because you know, some like they say, it's forces you don't mess with, yeah. stuff you yeah. don't know, so, you don't so, understand. There's, 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 there's evil somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. There's always a it's balance. True. There's some things that. You believe in the angels and God, you gotta believe yeah, in the, the demons devil, and the devil. The devil, yeah. the devil was an angel too. Yes. And so. You got to believe. Yeah. And there's some unexplained things that happen in this world that we cannot, and science cannot prove and cannot explain. Yep. So if I ain't seen it for myself, I wouldn't have believed it, but I've, I've seen it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of the video. If you guys like this video, leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace Bye. Out.